never ever and I mean never buy a house especially an affordable house without putting the things that I'm about to share with you in place get these items verified they can save you thousands of dollars there are dozens of things simple little things that are have to be in place when you're buying a house and all it takes is one simple little thing it will cost you thousands of dollars if it's missed you can be sued for specific performance of the contract so with that said there are many ways to avoid the headache and the loss of money listen the fear of loss is a stronger motivator than the opportunity to gain the reason why I say that is because when you purchase a house it's an emotional purchase so you can get very much emotionally involved especially when it comes to the bidding process and when you have more than one person wanting the same thing that you do and that's that perfect buy on that affordable house. Now the things I want to share with you, a couple of those are pretty basic and you may already know about those, but oftentimes there's many things with specific properties. So I'll give you the list that will cover everything. That way you can say, oh, didn't think of that one because I hear that pretty much on a daily basis. So number one, if you can pay cash for the property, I know you're probably thinking who the hell's got the cash to pay cash for a property, but if you're going to put down 20% and you have the means to borrow money from a bank, even a friend or a family member on a temporary basis, you can get a better deal on the property. You see, when you make an offer on a piece of property and you tell that seller, hey, I have cash and you can show proof of that cash, you'll get a better deal every time because you're showing them you have cash to purchase the property. And after you purchase the property, you can pull 80% of that cash back out of the property by doing a cash out refinance. Now, if you don't wanna pay cash for the property, it's really simple, just get approved. Once you're approved, they verified income, they verified your income taxes, they verified your job, they verified everything. They give you a piece of paper and it's the exact same thing as cash. You'll then wanna give that document to the agent that's gonna be representing you in the purchase of your next house. And that agent will give it to the seller who's selling you the house. So once you have that piece of paper, you're approved. You can make sure the agent that you choose to represent you has a copy of that so they can get it to the homeowner of the house that you're purchasing. Now it's important to know that every single home that you purchase, the homeowner has to fill out a property condition disclosure form. You can get a copy of that. You'll want to get a copy of that. You'll want to review a copy of that disclosure before you even look at the property oftentimes. This is gonna tell you what flood zone, if any, has there ever been a fire, has there ever been a flood, how old the central heat and air, the water heater, that sort of thing. Oftentimes, a good real estate agent will get you a copy of that before you even look at the property or while you're physically looking at the property. That way you can go through and have those items readily at hand as you walk through. Now having this disclosure in your hand will save you a lot of time because you can simply look on that disclosure while you're going through the house and if something's on that disclosure that stands out, maybe there was a fire in the house, maybe it got struck by lightning, maybe the house flooded at one point in time and you just don't want that to be a concern of yours with buying that property, then you don't have to. You roll on to the next property. Look, if you find a home that you like, it's okay to pull comparable properties in the neighborhood. A good agent will do that for you and they can tell you and verify for you if you're overpaying, underpaying, or if you're getting a great deal, or if you're just fair market value on your purchase of that home. Now what you'll want to verify on the house is how much of the homeowners association dues. Oftentimes people oversee that. So it's important not just to know what you're going to be paying in homeowners association dues if you're in a homeowners association, but you want to get a copy of the bylaws and restrictive covenants of the community. Perhaps you have a boat that you'd like to park on the side of the house because you have rear yard access to the property that you're looking to purchase. That it's an affordable buy, but if they won't let you park your boat there, it may not be the house for you. But you know, when it comes to buying a house, oftentimes the property's on a city water and a city sewer system. But if it's not, you'll wanna make sure that the septic system is verified with the county or parish and make sure it's in good operable order. If not, worst case scenario, it could cost you $5,000 to replace the septic system. The same goes for a well. If there's a well on the property, you have to make sure that the water's not contaminated, that the tank is actually holding water. And you also have to consider that it's a pressurized system, meaning that you have a motor that pulls that water out of the ground, pressurizes it in a tank, and then pushes it to the house. You got to make sure that all those components are working. If they're not, it's an easy fix for each component. Worst case scenario, a new well to be dug and put on your property, it's about $5,000. Now, some people don't want anything to do with an HOA. They don't want anything to do with homeowners associations. But even then, you have to consider, if you buy a property on, say, an acre of land, and I was at one today, and it was a beautiful little house. I was on that piece of property. It, there's no HOA. The houses were about an acre apart, but one of the neighbors, you could tell, they raised dogs. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my animals. I have three dogs. I love my pets, my dogs, and my animals. However, I don't wanna live real close to someone 
who's breeding or raising dogs because they never stop barking. Now, when you're talking to the neighbor, it's important to know and to find out what's behind the property. It's always great if you can buy a property and it backs up to a wooded area. Oftentimes, neighborhoods and subdivisions will be developed and they'll leave what they call a green space. It may be 10, 20, 30 feet of green space. Sometimes it's just woods. If you can find out who owns that property, because oftentimes if it's a vacant piece of property, it may just be developed one day into the future. So when a property like this one hits the market, this is a foreclosure. The bank usually does their due diligence in terms of pulling title, deed, taxes. They verify everything on the property. However, oftentimes when you buy a piece of property, none of that information is done. So you have to make sure that the contract states and reads for your protection that you reserve the right to get a title policy on the property and that you'll close it only if there's no back taxes, liens, or encumbrances on the property. And Lord forbid, never buy a property without a title policy. Now when it comes to the land of the property, oftentimes there's been a survey done on the property. But if they can't tell you or show you at the title company or the Registered of Deeds office that there's a survey on that property, just go ahead and pay for a survey. You want to know where the meets and bounds are of that property and you need to know and make sure there's no easements and there's no encroachments. There's nothing that's on that property that can affect the value of your property and no one can encroach upon your property including mineral rights. Now something you really want to look into when buying a property, any property, is the taxes. How much are the taxes on the property and how much is the insurance on the property? You see, insurance in a lot of states, especially states where you're close to the coastal waterways where there's flood zones, well, those insurances have gotten quite expensive, especially if you're in states like mine, Louisiana, or in Florida where there's been hurricanes and when hurricanes come through they do damage and when they do damage people make lots of claims on their properties and after those claims have been done believe it or not insurance companies they leave the state yes they not only leave the state but oftentimes they just absolutely go belly up and have to file bankruptcy and are non-existent now in louisiana you can still get insurance it's just triple the cost of what it would normally be on a property so the insurance companies not only hit the road, but oftentimes they're just left with having to file bankruptcy. Now you can get insurance in some states, it's just gonna cost a little more. So look, at the end of the day, do your homework, do your due diligence. Make sure you get a title policy on the property, get the house inspected, make sure you get quotes for insurance, make sure you get your taxes. There's no back taxes, liens, encumbrances on the property. Make sure you get a title policy on the property. A lot of factors. Make sure you see a survey, you get copy of the deed restrictions, the homeowners association, what are the dues, what do they cover, all of that. At the end of the day, just over 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 indulge in information i know it sounds really boring but it will save you a lot of time and a lot of stress when you're buying that next affordable home